In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to draw a horse with pastels. The first thing we need to do is transfer the image to the drawing surface. This is a computer printout and I'm using a graphite transfer to transfer it over. I've covered the back side of the piece of paper using a 4B pencil, which is a soft graphite pencil. Then with the back side of the paper pressed against the drawing surface, I can go over the lines or the edges of areas of high contrast on the photo with a 2H pencil now, which is a harder graphite pencil. This will allow the pressure placed by the 2H pencil to basically transfer the lines to the surface of the drawing paper, giving me a very light outline of the drawing. Now I can go ahead and start filling in areas of pastel. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna start very loosely here and slowly bring things together. The drawing's gonna go through a bunch of different stages and during each stage you'll, you'll see how I'm kind of working things back and forth, trying to figure out the values and the colors. I'm gonna start here with a burnt umber, which is a very dark brown, and I'm just filling in the areas of darkest shadow first. Now I'll switch over to a sienna color, and sienna is very similar to an orange. It's almost an earthy orange color. And I'm just gonna be focused on creating undertones that I see in the photo reference. As you can see here, I'm doing the same thing with yellow ochre, and I'll continue this process just pulling pastels from my set that I see in the photo reference. And I'm really just concentrating on creating undertones on the surface. We'll go over these undertones and we'll develop the drawing as we go through the process. But right now we're just worried about getting some of the colors on the surface. Now switching over to a lighter cream, we'll continue building up those tones. It should be noted here that I'm working on a different surface than I typically would work with pastels on. I'm using a smoother surface to paper. Typically I work with Canson's Mitance paper, which is a textured pastel paper. It's a little bit of a heavier paper and is really better suited for accepting heavier applications or multiple applications of the pastel. But I did want to try a smoother surface this time and see how things turned out. And at the end, I'll evaluate my experience using the smoother paper. I think you can go with a smoother paper as long as the paper is able to accept multiple applications of the pastel. And as I'm speaking about the surface of the paper, I'm continuing to just add tones that I see in the photo reference. And you can see I'm smearing a lot of this in or smudging this in with my finger at this point. I'm not really worried about details too much. I'm just worried about getting those colors on the surface and creating those undertones. Every time I see a color in the photo reference, I'm going over to my set of pastels and I'm trying to find a close match to that and just laying it on the surface and working it in. And a lot of times in the initial stages of a pastel drawing or painting, this is the approach that you want to take. You know, some people don't like to blend or smear the material into the surface and that's fine too. But a lot of times when I approach a pastel drawing or painting, these are the first things I do is just initially get a lot of color on. Now at this point, we've added uh, quite a bit of color. We've added some black and some darker grays and lighter grays. And the color I'm adding right now may look like it's white. It's actually a very light cream. It's almost white, but not quite. We'll go back with actual white a little later on in the drawing, but this color is white enough to add a lot of contrast. And speaking of contrast, at this point in the drawing, I've got enough information on the body of the horse that I can go back and add some of the colors around the horse for additional contrast. So I'm adding a bit of the dark brown, which is burnt umber, and then I'm adding some of the black over the top of that. And I'm also gonna go ahead and put an off-white color on the outside portion, which will eventually be the color of the barn. I'm not gonna put as much detail in the barn on the outside so that more of the focus is left on the horse's head. Initially in the eye section, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in with a bit of black. And now I'm gonna pull out a blending stump so I've got a little bit more control and work that material into the surface. And I'll go ahead and address a couple other areas with the blending stump as well. So hopefully you're starting to see that this is a very loose process at the beginning. And the more that you work the material on the surface, the more things become more detailed. And uh, this is the approach I typically take when I'm using pastels to start very loose and then slowly start to build in details. It's a very similar approach that you would take with drawing with uh, another powdery material like say charcoal. So I've added a couple of lighter areas around the eye 
And again, this is still with a light, light cream. It's not quite with the white yet. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start building some more applications over the top of what we've already created. Again, with burnt umber, a bit more of that sienna, and just a touch of the yellow ochre. And then I'm going to blend that in with a blending stop. Now, I'm being very careful to choose blending stumps that are not going to contaminate the surface. So I have several blending stumps off to the side, and uh, I'm making sure that I'm using one that's clean, or at least a side of the blending stump that is clean so I don't contaminate the colors that I have on the surface. Now, I absolutely love working with pastels because you can get so much color on the surface in a short amount of time. You don't have to really worry about mixing colors on a palette and then going to the surface. It's very immediate, but it does take a bit of patience. And you also have to understand that you have to layer colors and, and really slowly work areas a lot of times, especially if you're going for something that's a bit more representational. I think a lot of new artists forget that, or maybe they just don't know that. They get frustrated very easily because if you just put a few layers of color on the surface, it's not really going to get the job done. A lot of really strong pastel drawings actually have many, many layers, multiple layers in order to build up the colors so that they're believable. Now, as I'm continuing to add colors here and there, you're going to notice that the drawing is going through a transformation. You know, I'll, I'll take shadows out. I'll go back and add the shadows in. I'll create highlights here and there, and then I may go over the top of those. And that's because throughout the entire drawing process, it's basically a process of analyzing the photo reference as I work through it, trying to match the colors, trying to match the shapes of the colors in the photo reference in the drawing. And at this stage, you might even notice that the neck of the horse in the drawing is a little bit further out than the photo reference. And that's initially when I started this drawing, I wanted to show a little bit more of the horse's neck. But in a later stage of the drawing, I decide to make an alteration to that, which is another added benefit of using the pastels is you can just go in and make changes because you can cover over areas very easily. Now, periodically, I am going back in with a pastel pencil, and that allows me to create some more precise marks in various areas while still keeping with the pastel media. I'm using a white pastel pencil in areas, uh, a bit of the sienna pencil in a few areas, and just a bit of black as well. I'm going to try to minimize the amount of pastel pencil that I do use in here. I still want this to kind of have a very painterly feel about it when, when the image is finished. And a pastel pencil is very precise, as I mentioned, and can take away from that painterly feel if you're not careful. So as I mentioned before, I'm developing shadows and highlights and pushing them back and forth. And during the process, it's okay to allow that to happen. Don't feel like what you put on the surface has to stay there. You may hear painters refer to this process of pushing and pulling. And basically what they're talking about is pushing values, pushing values lighter or darker, and changing the color slightly. And with pastels, you can do this. You can work the color into the surface. You can layer another color on top. And of course, the color underneath is going to have some effect on the color you put on top. But of course, you can cover it completely if you put enough pressure and enough material over the top of it. So using pastels, although very clearly a drawing media because you're applying it dry, it, they behave very similar to painting. Uh, in fact, the whole thought process is very similar to painting because you have the same advantages as you would have with a painting. But of course, you're putting the material on dry. So at this point, I'm working the upper portion of the head of the horse, and there are some subtle changes in value that happen up here. So I'm using a bit of gray, a bit of black, and I'm trying to tone down the black in those areas. I want to mix some of that gray with that black and create a smooth transition of color and value in this area. And I'm using the blending stump to do a lot of that mixing. Of course, I'm using my finger here and there as well. But I think it's important to note that your entire drawing probably doesn't need to be smudged in or smeared in with your finger or a blending stump. Sometimes new artists get accustomed to blending and smearing and their entire drawing turns into a big blended or smeared 
image. And a lot of times that takes away from the diversity in the image, the variety that you need in the image. And it makes for a lot of blurred edges and it can kind of make things look a little bit dirty if you're not careful. So my suggestion is to have some blended areas and some areas where you just apply the material without blending at all. And typically it'll be the later stages where you apply that material without blending. All right, now I'm using a bit of a, a darker cool gray to create some of the shadows in the area outside of the barn. And as I'm doing so, I notice that I really want to change the angle of the neck. So I'm going to go back and add a bit of black up around the back side of his neck. So it feels a little bit more like the horse's head is emerging from the barn, maybe out of the darkness a little bit, make it a little bit more dramatic. And I know in the photo reference that a bit of his neck is visible, but I, I'm deciding to block out a little bit more of the light. And because I've made this decision, I'm going to need to go back and tone some of the highlights in the hair and the ears. So I address those areas as well. And instead of using a lighter value, I'm using a darker gray. Now his head does come out outside of the barn, so that's going to create a subtle cast shadow underneath his head. There is a light source coming from the right hand side, but it's a, a not a very strong direct light source. So it's going to create a subtle shadow underneath his head. Maybe a little bit more of a defined shadow underneath the edges of the slats of the barn and just underneath his jaw there's a little bit of a darker line there and of course i'll also need to darken up that area on the inside part of the barn there just where the light is not quite hitting now i'm going to use a very light light pink to accentuate some of the lines on the outside portion of the barn I'm not using a white here because I do want it to still appear kind of an off-white color. If I introduce the white, it's probably going to be a little bit too strong. I am going to tone down some of these lines with a blending stop. All right, now we're ready for the white. So this is actually a white pastel. And it may be very subtle, but it is going to contrast with the off-white or the very light cream that I have on the surface. Now I am going to take the white and make a few marks on the outside portion of the barn and maybe I'll increase the shadow underneath the nostril just a touch and blend that in with the blending stop here as we're making the finishing touches to the drawing. And as I mentioned before, I did want this to have a painterly feel about the fi finished image. I didn't want to bring it to a high level of completion. This is a relatively small drawing, almost a sketch, but now we can go ahead and pull the tape away from the surface and see those nice crisp hard edges, which are always nice to see when you tape off a drawing. And I'm just going to make that yellow ochre inside of the barn a little bit stronger just to create a little bit of an accent point, a little area of interest in the drawing. And now our drawing of a horse with pastels is complete. And I hope that this tutorial gave you some insight and I hope you enjoyed it. If you're ready to learn more about drawing, then check out the Secrets to Drawing video course. You can click on the video to learn more about the course, which is the most comprehensive video course available for learning how to draw. We cover everything from the basics like line, shape, form, value, texture, color, and color theory. And we talk about each one of the traditional drawing media, including graphite, pen and ink, charcoal, colored pencils, oil pastels, and soft pastels, all while covering the traditional concepts of portrait drawing, landscape drawing, and figure drawing. You'll learn the core concepts behind seeing as an artist. You'll learn how to draw from observation and draw from photos. Now, there's more than just videos. Ebooks are included with the course as well. Each module includes an illustrated ebook that is taken directly from the video included in the module. It includes images and a written commentary. There are 28 total modules in the course, which include 26 ebooks that total 178 pages. That's over five hours of video instruction. I hope you'll check out the Secrets to Drawing video course. Thank you.